everybody. It's Avalasia Love here coming to you live from my bedroom, ready to show off my costume for Halloween 2020. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, who the heck are you supposed to be? Unless you read the title, in which case it's completely ruined. But no matter, no matter at all, allow me to introduce myself in song. James Seymour, the only one he truly loved. When my son was newly born, I died. But I'm not what I seem, or am I? Stick around and you'll suddenly see more. Do you like my British accent? And no, I'm not going to do that throughout the entire video because if I did, I'd constantly be on edge worrying on whether or not I sound horrendous. But anyways, uh, I am Jane Seymour from Six of the Musical. Uh, quick rundown of Six of the Musical. It's a musical about the six wives of King Henry VIII, as you can probably tell by the title. <laughs> and... As I said, I am Jane Seymour. She was his third wife, and I'm gonna cover a few details about her character as I kind of go over my costume, but anyways, um, so, uh, anyways, it's a, Six and Musicals of a musical about the Six Wives of Hammer the Eighth. They all decide they want to form a girl group, but they need a lead singer. So they each take their turn explaining their stories through song, of course, and they decide whoever they deem had the hardest life with Henry gets to be the lead singer. So you're probably asking, who won? Well, it's a little more complicated than that. Not enough time to go into all the t details. So let's just get started with the costume. So. Uh, this is the dress that I wore for my Miss Amazing pageant. Uh, you can, I'm sure a lot of you don't know what that is. Miss Amazing is a an organization for girls and young women who have disabilities of any kind in order to, and they host a yearly event, uh, previously known as a state competition or pageant. I don't know what they call it now, but... Basically, every girl gets dressed up in a pretty dress and does her talent or passion presentation and basically tells her story, shows off her strengths. It's sort of a way to push for acceptance and understanding of girls and young women who have disabilities. So, I know to a lot of you this dress may scream Audrey Hepburn more than it does Jane Seymour, but when you think of it, Audrey and Jane do have some traits in common, mainly in the sense that they are both graceful, badass women who show that strength can be, and is, unapologetically feminine. Oh, and they both had a son. Well, in this case, Jane only had one, and Audrey had, like, two, I think. But... Anyways, details, details, whatever. I chose this dress because her color scheme is gray, white, and black, and I felt like this was kind of the closest that I had. I went shopping at Spirit Halloween, and uh, I went shopping at Spirit Halloween, and I was looking at like these corsets that they had, I don't know, bustiers, whatever. You know, I know that Jane, like, her costume shows a little bit more the chest, but I don't really think I feel comfortable doing that because I'm really, really busty, and I don't think I could find something that really supports me. Like, it was hard enough to find a bra, let alone, you know, something similar to her costume. But anyways, I'm also wearing these uh, bejeweled heels that I also wore to the event. Because in the show she wears like these boots, but the only boots I have were for my Alphaba costume. And uh, those I don't think would really go with the outfit, even if I stuck a bunch of fake jewels on them. So for the video, I just went with my diamond heels. But when I go trick-or-treating, I'm probably going to be wearing... Uh, I'm probably going to be wearing my black flats because there was one girl who did a 
full-on tutorial for the hair, the makeup, and the outfit for Jane. I can't remember her name at the moment, but I'll probably post and pin it in the comment section giving her a shout out because she's really, really, really good. She's not a big name YouTuber. She's just a girl kind of doing her own thing, talking about Six the Musical, providing some st tips about stage makeup, stuff like that. Anyways, you probably know who you are if you've done the Jane Seymour hair and makeup tutorial, so major shout out to you. And so yeah, a little bit of a close up is I did my hair up all nice because hers is sort of a simple half up, half down. And I also have like these small earrings because I know on the show she wears these big hoop earrings, but my ears are really, really small. And I'm worried that if I wore big hoop earrings that they would pull on my ears and cause irritation. So I just kind of went with these smaller ones. So that's the rundown of my costume. Now, why don't we take a look at some of the accessories that we have, including this prop microphone that I used. I also got, th I got this from Spirit Halloween and it has like an on off button and I would use it, but yeah, it, it makes this awful high pitched squealing noise every time I try to use it. And when I talk into it, it's barely audible. So I think, so yeah, I think I'm just gonna pretend like this thing, it doesn't work. So I'm just gonna pretend that it doesn't turn on or off and just, you know, use it, you know, without sound. Okay, now that that's out of the way, I also have this beautiful baby. I know I said I wasn't gonna do the British accent, but I couldn't resist because it's part of her monologue. And thankfully, I didn't have to go through three nights of labor to get this little guy. Yes, Jane's labor took three nights. Ow. But that's a story for, that's a subject for another day. Because she, you know, most people, that's pretty much the only thing people know about her other than she was the third wife. Henry truly loved her the most. I don't think he did. And, uh, anyways, uh... She was the one to give him the son he so desperately wanted. So I have this bitty twin boy that's gonna be my little baby Edward. And I don't really have any regal or renaissance or royal costumes. So I just went with this plain, you know, white outfit that sort of resembles like a christening, what I think resembles a christening gown cause she only lived long enough to see his christening. She didn't die right away. She died like 12 days after, which to be honest, I was kind of surprised because I've heard that when labor is prolonged, the m muscles in the uterus tend to get really worn out, which puts women at a higher risk for hemorrhaging. So I'm honestly surprised that she didn't die of a postpartum hemorrhage, but whatever, like I said, for another day. I'm gonna have to try and find some kind of a tutorial on how to do like a... I've tried looking at ideas for how to make a baby sling or baby carrier, but they're really hard. So I'm gonna have to find... I'm just gonna have to practice with that and either buy or make one because I need both hands, one for my trick-or-treat basket and one for my... Uh, one for my microphone. So that's that. You know, I know that people, I know people wouldn't know who I was anyway. I just like the idea of having a baby because I, you know, one of the reasons I love Jane so much is because she's very warm, very maternal. And I just feel like having the baby just makes the whole costume seem complete, you know, really compliments her character. Even if this baby looks nothing like a real baby, but I'm not spending tons of money on a reborn doll. It'd be nice, but I'm not, I'm not going to spend a ton of money on it, and I'm not going to force my family to spend a ton of money on a reborn doll. Anyways. And the final piece to my costume, I have two tiaras. Like, I know in the show she wears kind of like this headband thing with these little spikes, but I just decided to go with a regular run-of-the-mill tiara you know, maybe to closer resemble the animatics. So 
My viewers, give me a little bit of your opinion. Which TR looks better? I'm thinking maybe this one, because it's sort of similar to the AG art one. Yeah, that's kind of cute. Or maybe this one. Hold on. Yeah, maybe this one, because it's sort of... Yeah, this one kind of goes with my dress. And this is the one that I wore at the Miss Amazing pageant. You know, before you all go congratulating me like, oh, you got the tiara, way to go, woo. Every girl got one. I mean, there was obviously a big winner, the queen. I think that's what the official title was. Uh, but she got a bigger one, but every girl got these tiaras along with the trophy. So put in the comment section which one you think looks better. <laughs> I, words cannot describe how excited I am for this costume. Like, I love Halloween so much. I just get nostalgic feeling just thinking about it. And I just feel like I'm graduating because like, you know, so many years I was a Disney princess. Like last year even, I was Rapunzel from Tangled. And now I'm graduating from princesses to queens. Okay, one year I was Cleopatra when I was a kid but she was kind of messed up, so I don't really like to count that because, you know, my naive child mind did not know how messed up she really was. But anyways, so that's my costume, and I'll be right back with one other edition that I forgot, so uh, I'll go get that. Okay, everyone, I'm back. Sorry for that brief interruption. So, of course, you know, because of the times that we're living in, things are a little bit crazy, so, of course, I would need to take a little bit of an extra precaution. So, of course, since I'm going to be trick-or-treating this year, I have two masks that I'm going to show you. This one, which I also got from Spirit Halloween. I know it kind of covers up some of the beautiful makeup that I did, but eh, what can you do? Who knows if I'm lucky, I may be able to attend a Halloween party and go trick-or-treating, even if it's not on the same night. So this one kind of matches the dress and fits in with the, the spirit of the holiday. So that might be a good option. But it's a little hard to breathe in, and the orange clashes just a little bit. Excuse me. And then there's just this plain one. Yeah, I don't really have many that I feel like would be really fitting for the costume, so. Alright. Yeah, there's this one. This one is actually a little bit easier to breathe in. And it's pretty basic, and this could honestly lead to some really, really tragic modern AU. You know, even though I came up with the hint of an idea, don't let me stop you. Do what you want. But anyways, so this might be an option again, like with tiaras. Tell me which mask you think would go better with the outfit. And something I kind of want to point out is one of the things that I absolutely love about Six the Musical is the amount of symbolism in it. Because, like, especially in the costumes. I don't know if I already said the costumes, but whatever. Uh, I saw a comment kind of breaking down what they interpreted as far as Jane's costume, and it's quite interesting. Like, her skirt's the longest out of all of them. Okay, except Par, but she doesn't wear a skirt. She wears pants. Anyways, so Jane's skirt is the longest, and this could kind of go both ways. Some people interpret that as to be sort of like a wedding dress because Henry cherished her so much. But some people think it sort of represents her modesty or her more maternal instincts. You know, kind of like the traditional 50s housewife kind of longer style skirt. And also the fact that her color scheme is black, white, and gray. And because she died relatively young, like around 28, 29 years old, a little bit fuzzy. Uh, and also because Henry mourned her death the most, 
you know, some people think it represents colors of mourning. And just kind of going off topic a little bit, something I gotta point out is some people say, I heard, saw one person say, well, if Henry didn't love her, why did he mourn her? No. No, 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 no. He probably felt attracted to her and felt attached to her, but that doesn't mean he loved her. Something that some of you people may not know is there was one time when she had the audacity to speak out for mercy on behalf of a group of rebels from the Pilgrimage of Grace, and Henry basically told her, mind your place, woman, I can easily get rid of you like I did your predecessor. So yeah, truly loved? I don't think so. Now, okay, I'm not gonna go on a big I hate Henry rant. Even though I totally could, I'm not going to. Because one, if I did, we'd be here all night, and two, I'd feel kind of awkward doing that dressed as Jane, because she's the only one who really wants to see the good in him. But then maybe that's something for another day. So just kind of the point I want to make is feeling attracted or attached does not mean you truly love someone. That's not love. Threatening to have someone imprisoned and executed, that's not love. That's spite and anger. And he's not messing around. <laughs> Anyways, rant over. And the last thing I want to show off, like I mentioned the hoop earrings, or I guess, I don't know if these are really hoops, but some people think that sort of symbolizes the fact that, you know, her marriage was never really broken during her lifetime. You know, it was only broken after she died. So, anyways, that is my costume. And... I just love Jane so much as a character that I hope sometime in the future I can make a video sort of analyzing her and, you know, why I love her so much and why I feel that she's very underrated. But until then, I hope you all have a very safe and happy Halloween. Thank you. And post in the comments telling me what you're going to be for Halloween. I can't wait to see what you guys are going to be. So thank you all for watching and have a happy Halloween.